Hello and welcome to another video. So I know we've covered a few puppet and portal decks and different things in the past and different kinds of puppet, portal decks and everything else uh, for the last little bit. Mostly portals what I've been focusing on at least this first week and mainly because I feel like refining it down and finding different variants there's so many different options that you can go with so there's so many variations I can cover that I already have the cards for so why not do that. Either way, we're actually covering the Omen of Destruction puppet list this time around. A few of you guys wanted to see the puppet lists that I was trying and this is one that I have had refined down and played a little bit of and found that it was quite good. It's honestly pretty damn solid. I could not fault it for being consistent enough. The only real trouble is getting destruction in your hand early enough to use it, but even if you don't, you can usually just use the pressure of puppets alone to really beat your opponent out, which is great. So we're going to get right into it and check this deck out. So unlike the previous puppet list, this one focuses a lot more on just winning the game by sacrificing your puppets. Uh, something to keep in mind, of course, that I didn't really keep in mind to start with is that puppets effect isn't banish, it's actually destroy at the end of your opponent's turn. So it really is quite decent, it'll hold out quite well and really do a nice job even if you are stacking your hand with puppets, which is nice, so definitely something to give a go of. Even keeping that in mind though, I still feel like the Omen is probably a little slow. I mean, it's going to get beat out by a lot of decks, especially things like Chimera can really, really derail this deck. As you'll see in our next matchup, which is actually against the Chimera Rune, which is going to be very close. But honestly, focusing on healing is something that this deck can do quite well too, thanks to this new card here. Using the Amulet, you can easily heal back up, which is always a nice feature. And you actually get a nice target for Disciple of Destruction, which gives you better draw power. I think this is still better draw power than using the Pure Hearted Singer, just because the double draw is very easy to trigger. So stacking your hand is very easy. The only problem I had in this matchup, though, was a, few, a couple of these blood cards here are quite powerful and hard to deal with in the early game, so I mainly just focused on taking advantage of what I could. So making sure I traded off pretty reasonably, went face, not even too worried because we do have that little bit of backup heal here, especially with what we also have in hand. So even if we drop to 10 or below, we're going to heal up pretty well and that should counter most of Blood's cards, excluding Dark Feast Bat, pretty well. Of course, this new sword card is pretty painful to have to fight, especially considering it has quite a lot of damage and I'm sorry I just realised I said sword, I meant Blood, either way, I'm so used to saw Storm being in sword that Sometimes you get a bit muddled up. Either way, sub subjugation sort of cards and things like that do well. Like substitution does a great job at killing off things, and uh, using this here to really kill off the legendary was probably the best play I had available to me. Unfortunately, it would have been better if I had have been able to get destruction early. This is just one of those matchups where I wasn't able to get the destruction cards to go off early enough, which was disappointing. But it just goes to show that even against a more aggressive deck, you still do have a chance. It's just a matter of playing to your outs a little bit. So, Loco, Little Puppeteer, does a nice job. Still don't think it's quite as good as Pure Artifact, but the decks definitely work. It's going to be a very solid Tier 2 deck, I feel like. I don't think it might reach Tier 1, but it's definitely going to be in the high Tier 2 section. But of course, things can change, metas will shift, and I'm sure the mini expansion will shake things up when that comes in a month's time, but it'll be quite entertaining to see where all of that leads. I tell you, they're just dealing more self damage, probably trying to get their little boost up that they need. Not so lucky for us, though, because it does mean we're in the risk of being done at face bat. But we've got this pretty nice drop now. We're actually able to pretty easily play around this, which is pretty much all we can do at this point. And I sacrifice a puppet for the sake of just having my draws. Evil Eye Demon, not really a problem. And Disciple of Lust, also not a problem. And leads to the concede. Obviously, not having Dark Face Bat really did affect them. And next up, we are playing against Rune. So. Chimera Rune is still reasonably popular, it's no surprise there considering it can pretty much just add creation in as an extra at this point, and it's still always been a pretty solid deck ever since Chimera was kind of introduced and D-Shift rotated out, but overall I feel like as long as you can get Destruction Omen you can still have a pretty decent matchup against it. Of course if they end up with a 20 proc shift you're pretty screwed unless you get the Amulet which you're only running a single one of for these sort of matchups. 
if you can manage to get the Neapolitan Amulet, you're going to be set, as it will defend you quite well for a couple of turns. So I take advantage of the turn 1, turn 2 lineup play, keep my turn 3 just in case, I mean, sorry, my Parculus, for my turn 3, for Sylvia, in case I don't have another proc and I want something to play. But since they didn't play anything, Puppet Room is going to be the way to go because an early Puppet Room sets up really well for Omen of Destruction, giving you a few cards you can actually take full advantage of. The opponent's just spell boosting casually by the looks of things. And we get a pretty comfortable turn to drop Destruction down. The Omen of Destruction. Of course, I actually should have played a puppet here, I should have just left it on board. That was a pretty huge mistake to make there. I would have been able to free up a slot and not have to worry about losing out on this turn. So I wouldn't have missed this Hamelin draw, which would have gave me more potential puppets, which then would have also led to a more successful turn overall. So I did play out all the puppets here, mainly just trying to get them all out so that I can have something that will do reasonably well when it comes to it and it will allow me to play Destruction in White next turn. Which is pretty great, honestly. So playing Destruction in White first so I can get Destruction in Black and then proc it with the Puppet here was pretty much the better play. Now I don't want them to get Spell Boost advantage, so that's why I attack into them, which is a pretty good way to deal with this. And we still get our healing, which is a pretty good backup plan even if it is going to be very, very risky. So at this point, I still can't play Destruction in black yet. I can use my uh, substitution to clear this out at least a little bit. Completely ignore Sylvia in this situation, mainly because I just can't be bothered with it. And we decide to go for the Puppet and Strike Form Golems to clean the, the Destruction in black down low enough to be playable next turn pretty easily without any kind of concern. Plus it gives us a chance to actually play a 2-drop alongside it. Especially if they clear this switch, it looks like they are. And the healing is just kind of nice. I really like white for healing. I am definitely want to try the uh, gold that will duplicate these. I think that'll be a lot of fun. It is still a reasonably slow deck though. That's where running into the decks like this can be risky. If they had a perfect Chimera this turn, we would have been in some big trouble. Fortunately for us, that wasn't the case. We got the 10 damage. I set up the Heartless Battle with Lloyd, mainly to stop a giant Chimera killing me, as I felt like that was going to be the way to do it. I mean, to get over 30 damage with giant Chimera, now that is difficult. Of course, they did end up with this 7 to my face, thanks to the spell effect from the last turn, but that still only put them at 24. Then they play double Fiery Embrace into giant Chimera. If they had that even spell boosted, you know, just a few more times, I would have been absolutely devastated. Fortunately, not quite enough, and ended up securing us the game. So at this point, I think we've tried most of the major variants of Portal, at least until they're more refined down and more meta style decks, which I'm sure we'll see going forward as most of these decks usually get refined down quite quickly and we'll probably find their optimal plays very, very soon. So if you guys did enjoy this video, hit the like button and subscribe for more content. You'll find the deck list in the description below. Until next time, see ya.